Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about forces, free body diagrams, and what net force is and why it's important. Maybe you're in a physics, AP physics, or physical science class, and you need to know something about forces. Well, the first thing we can say is that a force is just a push or a pull. And there are two different categories or types of forces, so contact forces and field forces. So contact forces are things that you would just expect, like this guy is pushing against the wall, the wall is pushing back on him. He is in contact with the wall, and so there are applied forces between those two objects, the wall and him. They have to be touching each other to have contact forces between them. The forces demonstrated up here are all contact forces as well. But there's another category of forces as well, things that you're familiar with, and those are field forces. So examples of those would be gravitational force or or magnetic force. Hopefully you played with magnets as a kid, like you flip a magnet over and then you feel the repulsion or attraction, depending on how it's oriented. And you know if you've done that, if you played with magnets, you know that they don't have to be in contact with each other to be able to produce that force between them. And even if you haven't played with magnets, you've dealt with gravity. If you jump in the air, you don't have to be in contact with the ground for it to pull you back down to the earth. It continually pulls you back down to the earth. Even while you're going up, you're accelerating downwards. So gravity is a good example of a field force. There are others, but let's use gravity and maybe the magnetic force there to understand what we mean by a field force. All right, let's continue. Easy. And so one of the more important things we can say about forces is that they are vectors. That means a couple things. That means the direction that the forces point in matter, and forces can be broken down into components. That means we can get the x and y parts of that vector using some simple trig. If we take this vector right here, for instance, and make it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle, if we happen to know like the angle here and this hypotenuse value, we can solve for the adjacents using cosine. We can solve for this opposite leg over here using sine. And so that's one thing we can do with forces. We can get their components, and we have to have a direction associated with forces because they're vectors. Things that are not vectors are called scalar quantities. So scalar quantities like mass or temperature, they have no direction associated with them. In fact, it makes no sense to talk about direction with those. All right, and one other thing to say at the outset is that the units of forces are newtons, and a newton is about the weight of one typical apple. All right, and real quick, this is a picture of my old 86 Toyota pickup named White Lightning. It was glorious, rusted out on the sides, no hubcaps, but it was dependable. I loved that truck. And let's say that White Lightning got towed. It did get towed a couple times. And in fact, I think this diagram is backwards. I think it was towed from the back, if I remember that correctly. But I'm not going to take the time to redraw this diagram, and that actually illustrates my points. Because it takes time to draw a diagram like that. And it is important to draw diagrams for physics problems, but we don't have enough time in the world to draw a diagram that looks something like this, like to draw a full-on truck every time you're going to do a problem that involves a truck, right? What we can do instead is just have a dot in the middle, like this dot right here, and we can analyze what's happening in this truck by looking at the forces that are on that truck, just the forces that are affecting that truck right there. And when we do that, we're making what's called a free body diagram. So we use free body diagrams all the time in physics to analyze what's happening with forces on objects. Not from the object, but on that object. All right, so if we think about these forces, there is the force due to gravity pulling down on the truck. And then you may not realize this, but there is a force on the truck from the ground, you could say. And that's because as the truck pushes against the ground, the ground pushes back on the truck. There's the force on the truck, like the applied force from the tow truck on the pickup truck itself. And then there is a frictional force, and that's in the opposite direction of motion or possible motion. Always. Friction always works in the direction opposite that of motion or possible motion. So we'll talk in more detail about friction later. But notice, if I drew this, if I drew these forces here with this dot in the middle, I could actually analyze what's going on in terms of the forces on this object. In fact, I don't even need the diagram of the truck itself. I could draw a dot to represent the truck, and that would make life infinitely easier. And that's exactly what we do. We just represent an object with a dot and draw the forces that are affecting that object, and that's what's called a free body diagram. Make sure you get all of the forces that are going to be affecting that object on your free body diagram. And if you can do that, that'll help you to organize your thinking as you start the problem. 
All right, and so let's talk about something called net force. What we mean by net, we mean like overall. What's the overall force on an object? So let's say we have an object, I'll represent it by a dot. I unfortunately covered up the dots. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But if I have one force going to the right, five newtons, we'll call to the right the positive x-axis and to the left the negative x-axis. And I have another force in this object of negative three newtons to the left. And I wanted to write what the net force is on this object in the x-axis. Well, that would be five newtons to the right plus a negative three newtons to the left. Because remember, direction matters. And we're going to represent that with the negative sign here for an overall net force of two newtons. Now I could write this another way, which is completely legit, and these are just synonymous with each other. When we say net, we mean like overall. So the overall net force would be all of those forces in that axis, just in the x-axis, not in the y-axis here, is what we're analyzing. By the way, don't get intimidated by this. This just means the sum of. So sigma, the sum of the forces. All right, let's try another example. Let's say I switch this up, and instead we have a negative 5 force and a positive 3 force. What's the net overall force in this object going to be? Well, it's going to look like this if you're using sigma over here, the sum of the forces. And it's going to look like this if you're writing it in the other style over here. Both of these mean the same thing. It's just a preference thing, whatever you prefer. It's important to know what's happening in the x-axis and what's happening in the y-axis in terms of your net force because a net force will cause an acceleration. So we're going to talk in more detail about this in our next lesson, but that is what causes acceleration. So if you have an object on the desk in front of you or any object nearby, if you apply a force, a great enough force, so that it has a net force, an overall force in one direction, that object will accelerate in the same direction that the net force is in. And that's why this is important. And of course, that acceleration relates to everything we've done so far when we've talked about kinematics. In fact, forces are the cause of motion of the study of kinematics. All right, so we're going to build on this in future lessons as we continue to learn about forces and continue to work through the entire year of physics. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully you stick around for the next lesson. If you have any comments, let me know down below and hope you have a great day.